Hi, I'm Chris Walker with Rio Products, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of our how-to series. Today's episode is all about how you prolong the life of your fly line. Uh, at Rio, we spend a lot of time thinking about ways to make not only a high-performing fly line, but also one with lasting durability. And even when everything goes right and the line is used lightly, eventually it will wear out and fail. But what happens frequently is before it reaches that point, it's damaged by other external factors. So today's episode is all about how you avoid doing that. Uh, now there are a couple design requirements that go into fly line coatings. And the first is that the coating be flexible. It needs to be flexible because your line bends and unbends every time you make a cast. So if the line's rigid, it will eventually crack and not last quite as long. So flexibility and softness of coating is an important factor. Uh, the second factor we design in is it needs to be tough enough to withstand abrasion from rod guides. Now rod guides are quite smooth, uh, so there really isn't much abrasive force here, but we do need to have a level of toughness which prevents that line from uh, wearing out just by passing through the guides and developing friction that way. Now outside of those two uh, possible areas where a line could fail, there are quite a few others that can cause your line to fail prematurely. So let's go take a look at some of those now. So here I am in the middle of a stream, and as you can see, I'm standing on a small gravel bar and stripping my line right onto the rocks. Now we just talked about how the uh, inside of your fly rod guides are nice and smooth, so there's not much opportunity to scratch or abrade your fly line when it's flowing through there nice and clean. Uh, however, when I pull my line out of the water and put it onto a gravel bar like this, uh, I stand a chance of picking up you know, small bits of dirt or gravel or sand that can cause a lot of abrasion in the fly rod guides. Wading cleats are also the mortal enemy of fly lines anywhere. The very worst thing I can do is take a step forward and walk all over it. So what I'll do to avoid getting my line dirty there is I'll simply strip it out into the water. So I'll take a couple steps over here and now you can see when I strip my fly line in, it all lands in the water and there's not nearly as much opportunity to get it dirty. There are a couple other places that are really easy to get your fly line dirty, and the first is in the bottom of a drift boat. So if I'm standing in a drift boat and stripping it into the hole, uh, and especially if I'm kicking it around in my shoes, that's another opportunity to pick up that dirt and grime. Beaches are especially bad too if you're a surf angler, because everything around you is sand. So any op opportunity you have to strip your line into a stripping basket, say, instead of onto a sandy beach will also prolong the life of your line. So there are plenty of other foreign objects in the river that can damage my fly line as well. So let's go take a look at some of those next. So now, as you can see, I've made a really terrible cast. Uh, my fly is in a tree and my line actually got washed under a rock in this little uh, riffly section here. Uh, so the temptation, of course, is to just yank until something breaks, uh, but that's a really bad idea. If my fly was in a tree and my line was in the air, that might be okay as long as I don't mind losing my fly. So it's awfully tempting to just pull on it. All it does is saw my line back and forth across that rock. And as we said, fly line coatings are soft and they're not meant to rub across anything that's harder than the coating itself. So what I'll do instead is just walk up to the snag here and make sure I free my line gently from under this rock rather than damaging the coating. Okay, so now that I've got my fly and line off that rock and tree, we can talk about some other things that'll hurt your fly line. Really any foreign object in a river, such as a rock like this, or a log, or a bush, or it could be the gunnel of a boat, or even worse, the prop of an engine, all of those things can cut your fly line. Uh, and actually one other thing that falls under that category is your leader and tippet as well. So let's take a look at how you prevent your leader and tippet from damaging the coating of your fly line. So there's a nasty tailing loop. My line and leader landed in a big pile and I've got a tangle now. So let's take a look at how we undo that tangle without doing any further damage to the fly line coating. So that tailing loop has tied a very neat overhand knot right around the tip of my fly line. And uh, if I were to just pull this knot tight, it would actually cut right through the coating of the fly line down to the core. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead is just back the knot out very slowly and gently. There we go, knot's undone and the coating is just fine. So once you're done fishing for the day, there are a couple things you can do in terms of maintenance and storage to keep your fly line performing at its best. Uh, the first and probably the most obvious is to clean your fly line. If you happen to get it really dirty during the day, it's nice to have a uh, fly line cleaning kit that you can wipe it down with afterwards. This is a nice little kit because it includes some line dressing and a microfiber cloth to clean the line. 
We also have uh, singly packaged fly line cleaning towelettes, which are impregnated with the exact same line dressing that comes in this kit. So those are a nice option for a really convenient way to clean your line. And if you don't have either, uh, warm water and soap works just great too. Now in terms of storage, uh, fly lines don't really like to be exposed to high heat for long periods of time. The chemicals that actually make the coating soft can leach out over long periods of time at high temperature. If they're at room temperature, those chemicals last indefinitely. So it's really important to remember when you get home to take your rods and reels out of your car to keep your fly lines performing at their best. So hopefully you've learned something today and it allows you to keep your fly lines performing in peak condition for as long as possible. If you like this how-to episode, you can check out the rest of them online at rioproducts.com. Thanks for watching.